What's up guys, this is Matt from Crunchmo and today I'm here with my next Under the Radar video. I'm here to talk about a game called Akai Katana. Akai Katana is a game that I honestly did not know existed until about a month ago. When I found out about it, I looked up some gameplay footage, looked up some reviews, and I knew that this is a game I had to try. And it didn't cost me a lot. This game runs for about, online at least, runs for about maybe $9 to maybe $15 brand new. So it's definitely an inexpensive game to go try out if you're interested in it. I'm going to tell you why this game is so good. This game is made by Cave. Cave is world renowned for their shoot 'em up bullet hell games. If you don't know what bullet hell means, bullet hell is a genre of shoot 'em up where, well essentially it's what it sounds like. The entire screen is filled with bullets, whether they be your bullets, whether they be the enemy's bullets. There's bullets everywhere and you have to constantly be dodging be defending, just try not to get hit by any of them. It might seem a little bit overwhelming, and in some cases it can be quite overwhelming, but it's not as bad as it, it might seem at first glance. Because once you pick up this game, it's very easy to get into, it's a little bit intricate to learn the details and how you're supposed to exactly play to master the game and get high scores, but once you do, even if you just pick it up and, and just suck at it, it's still a lot of fun. But once you do learn the, um, the intricacies of it, it, it gets to be very, very fun. Now this is a game you could play for maybe a half an hour burst, just to kill some time, or you can play it for hours on end. It, it doesn't have much of a story. Any story that it does have is told through the instruction booklet, which by the way, the instruction booklet for a game that came out in 2012, at least in America, is fantastic. I mean, it's, uh, it's 20 something pages long, I'm tempted to say about 24 pages long which is about 24 more pages than instruction booklets usually have nowadays. Uh, if you get an instruction booklet at all with a new game, it probably has one to two pages. So it's a nice change of pace to see a fully fleshed out instruction book with um, with the story and, and the characters detailed and stuff like that. And really, like I said, that's the only way you're going to get any story out of this game because the only story that's actually in the game is told at the end of each character's campaign. Now, each campaign... Uh, lasts about 45 minutes I would say on average if you're good at it you could probably beat it in a half an hour if you take a little bit longer you could probably beat it in about an hour it's not gonna last you more than an hour I could say for each character so with three characters in the game you're looking at maybe two and a half hours but that's not a bad thing the thing is this is the kind of game you can pick up and play over and over again and just not get bored with it which is the great thing about it really the main motivation to playing this game besides the fact that it's just flat out fun is getting a high score and it can get really tough to get a really high score in this game especially with all the bullets on the screen like I said because if you if you die three times and you continue you lose your score now the gameplay is a little bit tough for me to get into because honestly if I explained everything to you right now you would probably not buy the game that's how complicated it sounds on paper in practice it's not that complicated but I mean you got your attack modes you got your defense modes you gotta know how to use both of them and know what both of them do You've got, uh, the, if you hit the X button, you turn into, I forgot what the game calls it, but you turn into another type of ship, more powerful. Um, it, it's got a ton of stuff, and, and there's three different game modes. There's Origin Mode, which is essentially just a port of the arcade version of the game. It, the screen is a little bit smaller, and um, it, it's actually got different mechanics from the Slash Mode, which is the other mode in the game, so you have to know how to use both modes effectively. The Slash Mode is the other main mode in the game, I would say. That's probably my personal favorite mode. I've put most of my time into that mode. It, it's different from the it's different from the origin mode. It's got different mechanics. If honestly, if I explained to you all of the differences between the two, we'd be here for a little while. And the other third mode is climax mode, which is exclusive to the Xbox version, I believe. To be quite honest, I haven't played much of it. From what I have played, it is the hardest mode in the game. Um, some of the power-ups go flying away if you don't catch them in time and stuff like that. There's a lot more ships, a lot more bullets. That's a mode that's definitely for veterans of Akai Katana and for shoot 'em up games in general. Now, I for one, because I know there are a lot of people out there like me in my situation, I am not a big shoot 'em up guy. I'm not a big bullet hell guy. Didn't even know this game existed until about a month ago. So if you would like that, if you're in that same situation and you like the way the gameplay looks, you like the way the game sounds, I implore you to check out this game. It's a ton of fun, and hopefully it might spur you on to maybe buy some more Bullet Hell games, because it's definitely done that for me. I'm definitely going to check out a lot more Cave Shooters, maybe Death Smiles 1 and 2, maybe uh, maybe some other games from them that aren't region locked that were made in Japan. So, with that being said, I hope you guys think the game looks good, because it definitely is. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and have a great night.